It's finally time for another episode of Coffee with Bart. Do you remember this web series, guys? It's finally time. And there's two big things I would like to share. One of them is a live update and it has to do with this mysterious package that I will re reveal at the end of this video. Second of all, I also have a mystery bag here with a surprise for you. But Let's start with first things first. Coffee with Bart is a um, web series on my YouTube channel in which in each episode I show a special Dutch snack. I'm a person who was born and raised in the Netherlands. I am from Nederland, the Netherlands. Hallo iedereen, hoe gaat het met je? Jullie horen vast niet vaak hoe mijn moedertaal klinkt, maar zo klink ik dus in het Nederlands. That was Dutch, my mother tongue. Interestingly, a lot of people think I'm Brazilian. Um, that's because I work in Brazil. I'm a biologist that studies insects sometimes in Brazil, but I am not Brazilian. I don't even speak Portuguese that well, sadly. But today I'm here to show you something cool. You see, I've always had a huge problem that makes it difficult for me to be a YouTuber. My channel is permanently and completely demonetized by YouTube. That means YouTube is not paying me for my success. I am not being paid for my views. So instead I have something called crowdfunding. But I don't like taking money from people without doing something in return. And so many years ago we started a tradition on this channel. If on the crowdfunding website Ko-Fi, which is a website where you can basically uh, send me short tips with PayPal, like $3 each time. If we hit a certain goal, then every time I show a special snack from my country. And today I am going to show you what is called speculaas. And not just that, I brought many versions of it with me today and I'm going to talk about it. Now some people are going to say, Bart, I don't like this. Your channel is about nature and insects. It's not about food reviews. I know, I know, it's just a silly bit of fun that I like to do on the side sometimes. But most of all, it helps to fund my channel, because each time we reach the $55 goal on Ko-Fi, I show you a new special snack from my country. And as we can see, today I've brought something to you. Oh my god, it's, it's already broken. But that's okay, the point of it is that it's very crumbly. So this is called speculaas. And as you can see, you're supposed to break off a piece very easily. That's why, unfortunately, it's already broken in the package when I bought it. It's very typical. But just look at how large it is. Now, I don't know if some of you are into history and know the history of my home country, the Netherlands. But in the 17th century, the Netherlands was very big on the international spice trade. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Dutch East India Company. But back in the days, this company used to bring many spices from all around the world to the Netherlands. Unfortunately, in some cases, this was through colonization. Um, yeah, we colonized countries to take their spices. That's what we did back in the day. However, what's interesting is when these spices first arrived to Europe, they were expensive, as expensive as gold, and they therefore be instantly became delicacies for the rich. Now, nowadays, it's hard to imagine that things like nutmeg and pepper are expensive delicacies because you can get them in every supermarket and they become commonplace. But back in the days, they were something special. And because they were delicacies, Dutch people started making these kind of biscuits that have a very unique spicing to them. Now, let me tell you, I have here on my phone some of the ingredients that are used to make speculaas biscuits or cookies. So this contains cinnamon, cloves, mace, ginger, pepper, yes there's pepper in it, cardamom, coriander, anisids, nutmeg. That's a lot of spices isn't it? It's kind of like a spicy peppery flavor. So to summarize what it tastes like, imagine cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, anise, white pepper, coriander, ginger, cardamom, and mace. Sometimes they even add a hint of lemon too. Uh, but the cookie is very sweet. 
and it's very traditional Dutch food for my country, I suppose. So interestingly, it doesn't seem like much, but the history of these uh, giant biscuits, which are unfortunately broken, but who cares? They still taste the same even if they're broken. The history of this goes back to the um, 17th century. That's a lot of history for a cookie. So let's give it a try. Ooh, it's getting windy out here. Whoops. Hmm. I mean, I've eaten this many times. To me, to me it's not new. In the Netherlands, it's even common to receive this snack if you're visiting somebody's house and having coffee. The taste is interesting. It's sweet, salty, buttery and spicy at the same time. And it's very crunchy, but it's not hard. It's crunchy in a way that it easily crunches in your mouth if you chew on it, like it's not hard. It also has a tendency to kind of melt in your mouth. So... In the Netherlands, um, speculaas is pretty popular, but it's also eaten uh, in Belgium, parts of France and parts of Germany as well. And even though it's silly to see Bart Coppens, the moth guy, talk about food on YouTube, it's a tradition that we've done on my channel. It's already episode number nine. Now, you're not always supposed to eat it in these huge chunks. Even though if you go to the store in the Netherlands, sometimes you'll see that they sell huge versions of it shaped like people, shaped like windmills or other historical figures. It's kind of interesting. But typically there is also a smaller version of this biscuit. Let's get it out. Yay, there we go. See, this is more typical. It's in a smaller packaging. And there you go. Here's the smaller version of basically the same cookie. These taste pretty much the same. But it's more manageable than breaking off huge chunks. To somebody from the United States, it would be very difficult to describe the flavor. I think I didn't attempt before to describe it, but you really have to... First of all, this, the, this cinnamon is kind of strong. I definitely taste the cinnamon. It has a kind of sharpness because of the pepper. It also has a really kind of butteriness. I think uh, they, I'm not sure if they use butter to make it. I should look it up, but I think so. You can definitely notice a hint of butter and salt. Usually on the outside of the cookie, there is a slight, you know, there's some saltiness to it. Hmm. It's basically the perfect cookie for people who don't like candy that is overly sweet, I suppose. And the funny thing is, I guess that this is one of those things that you'll really have to taste to really understand what it tastes like, even though I'm trying my best here to describe it, what these small or big cookies taste like. Bas these two are basically the same, they taste the same. It's made from the same stuff. But you can get it in many varieties. Now, interestingly, Dutch people like this stuff in a lot of ways, and since recently They've even made a kind of sandwich pad that tastes like it. Now, if you've never eaten speculaas before, I don't recommend trying the sandwich pad first. It tastes different than the cookie, I guess. Traditionally, it's supposed to be a cookie, not a spread. But they added a unique flavor of it, I guess, to many kinds of products. And I thought it would be interesting to show you. Let me show you. There you go. 
I can't believe I'm doing this, ladies and gentlemen. It's really an unusual type of content for me. Well, after nine episodes, I shouldn't be that surprised. There you go. Basically, this stuff, it tastes like the cookie itself. That's funny, isn't it? So yeah, if you're in the Netherlands and you want a sandwich for lunch that has the weird buttery, spicy, salty flavor of speculaas, you can put it on bread too. It's not bad. It kind of works. But maybe I'm just saying that because I'm Dutch. But if you want cookies on your bread, we can go even further because you have mini cookies. Yep, this is also speculaas that you can add to your yogurt or on your bread. It's also popular here, here, let me show you. And in here are essentially tiny cookies, yep. Tiny speculaas cookies that you can put on your bread, just like that, see? They're made from the same stuff as this, I suppose, see? Same stuff, different varieties, so you can put it in everything if you're addicted to it. Leave it up to Dutch people to put cookies on their bread, I suppose. We are one of the strangest races that you can find in Middle Earth, Dutch people. There you go. I know it's silly, I know it's weird, I know it's a bit out of place, but you know. Hope you learned something new. If you're curious about trying it though, you'll probably have to find an international web shop that ships the stuff to where you live. And then you can give it a try. Now, Ladies and gentlemen, I do have something to apologize for. We're gonna get to that. And after that, I'm going to show the big reveal that's in these packages. But first, um, I have to apologize for something. You see, on my channel, I explained it before, we have a tradition where if we hit the $55 goal on Ko-Fi, I will make another episode showing you a special snack from my home country, the Netherlands. Many of the things we eat in the Netherlands are unique. Um, not many people get to see them. So it would be a fun way to learn about, I guess, my country. And a fun way for me to crowdfund my demonetized channel. I put a lot of time and effort in this channel, essentially. And I need to find creative ways to make money from this channel. Otherwise, it becomes unsustainable. But the problem is, we reached the $55 go months ago and I never noticed. So that means this episode is very late. And for that, I apologize. Now guys, if I make a promise, I always deliver on it. Although sometimes uh, I guess I'm too slow on delivering on my promise. I hope I didn't keep you guys waiting for too long because we hit the $55 go goal uh, over a month ago. And I was checking my account today to see how it was doing. And I was like, oh damn, people already paid for a new episode. I should get to work. And that's what I've done. I've arranged the snacks to show you. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed seeing that. And now I'm going to answer the questions from the people who donated, sorry, and uh, contributed to the goal. But before that, there is a little announcement. Um, that's because, ladies and gentlemen, a long time ago, I promised if we ever reach 10 episodes of this series, I will live stream myself eating five packets of double spicy fire noodles. I made this promise years ago and we are finally getting close. This is episode number nine. If we go to episode 10, I will be forced to eat these super spicy noodles on a freaking live stream and it's going to hurt. 
but I promised. So if we get to the goal, ladies and gentlemen, this is what's gonna happen. I don't know, but if you like this series and want to contribute to it, and want to ruin my day by making me eat terribly spicy noodles, on the live stream that people can comment on live, go ahead. If we hit episode number 10, it's going to happen. Another thing I always do in this series is I answer people's questions. When people contribute on Ko-Fi, they're able to leave a comment. And this can be a question or a supportive comment. And in this mini-series, I like to read their comments. So, one of the first tips that we received, let's see. Well, the first tip was from Ari, and I, um, he or she has to say, don't buy alcohol with it. Also, do you know where I can order Dutch desserts online? I'm from Kuwait, and I would like to try some. Well, in the Netherlands, I order them from a web shop sometimes. It's called Worldwide Holland, I believe. But there's more of them. The question is, I don't know if all of them ship to Kuwait. Hmm, depending on where you live, it can be quite hard to find Dutch food or Dutch products or Dutch candy, I think. Some companies do international shipment, but keep in mind this can be expensive. Either way, thank you for that $6 tip. And I'll tell you, no, I'm not spending it on alcohol. Most of the funds I raise um, through crowdfunding on this channel are going through the show, such as getting more snacks for this video series, but also just the time and resources I spend on making videos. So thank you for that. The next tip is by a very familiar someone, um, a tip of $10 by somebody called Jeff Knight. Now Jeff is a supporter of this series. I've seen his uh, name many times before. Jeff, if you're watching this, thank you very much, um, my man. It made a big difference and you helped sponsor this episode, episode number nine. After that, I received another tip, and it's by someone called Bad Soup Man. All right, Bad Soup Man. Um, politically sensitive username you chose for yourself. And he or she says, he, I suppose, since it's Bad Soup Man, not Bad Soup Woman. Hi, Bart, I love your content. Since you're demonetized and it's hard for you to crowdfund, um, it's hard for you to crowdfund, and if you had more money, or oh, wait, the sentence is a bit jumbled. I think the question is if you had more money to make upgrades. I wonder what are some upgrades you would consider making if your channel grew bigger and if you had more money. That's a good question because uh, the budget is always one of the limiting factors, I suppose, that I get when doing YouTube videos. It's very hard to be a YouTube content creator that's demonetized, you know, because you're putting so much hours in something. And YouTube is not supporting it, you for it. I think one of uh, the things that I would like to do is if this show grew, uh, grew bigger and I had a bigger budget, one of the things I'd like to do is buy like a piece of land and rewild it. Like turn, turn degraded land back into forest or own my own piece of forest where rare insects can be preserved. That's one of the things that I would like to do. And that way my channel would make a good impact on the environment and on insects. And I could make videos like how to preserve a forest, you know. Um, I could show people some changes I would make in the environment and to preserve the rare species that live in there. I think that would be nice. Another thing that I would really want is probably a breeding space for butterflies. I'm talking about like a greenhouse. I think breeding tropical butterflies would be excellent for my channel. It would make my channel much more successful than it already is. Everybody loves butterflies, but I would also like to breed them. I have the knowledge to breed them. I have the context to obtain very rare butterflies, but I don't have the facility. And having like a small greenhouse or heated breeding facility, that would really help my studies, help my research, but also the quality of this channel and the entertainment. That's what I'm really missing in my life, I think. So, 
So let's see the next one. Well, next I have two tips from an anonymous GoFi supporter. Um, he or she didn't really seem to leave their name. Thank you, a anonymous GoFi supporter, for sending me twice three dollars. Then once again, a tip from Jeff Knight. Jeff, again, thank you very much for the twenty dollars. That is truly very generous. You've been a massive supporter of this series. And his message was, I hope you enjoy your Brazil trip. Well, I'm already back from Brazil right now, and I can guarantee you that I enjoyed it. I have a small reveal, though, pertaining to Brazil. The next one is by Water Lily, who donated $10. I would like to say thank you very much, Water Lily, for your $10 tip. This also really helps my show and helps me make videos. I'm very grateful for it. And that was it for episode number nine. And now we all wonder. Are we ever going to get episode number 10? Who knows? The thing is though, that's what the big reveal was for. Because ladies and gentlemen, this contains $600 worth of insect breeding equipment, breeding sleeves, breeding cages, but also materials to regulate temperature and humidity. And I'm taking all of this with me back to Brazil. Because ladies and gentlemen, in about two months time, I'm returning to Brazil. I'm going back to the rainforest in southeastern Brazil to study the life cycles of butterflies and moths there. And I'm going for six months. I'm going to spend half a year of my life in Brazil. That's crazy. And that means I will be gone for a long time. And during this time, I will not be able to upload much videos, sadly. But when I return from my trip, oh man, I'm going to have a half a year worth of content made in the rainforest. One of my missions in Brazil is to breed local species of butterflies and moths and document their life cycles and ecology. That's what my work is. Uh, that's what I'm sponsored for right now. And that way my channel is finally really making a difference for insect conservation and the things that I do. And I'm very proud for that. I'm very happy that this has happened, this uh, fantastic collaboration. And that's what I wanted to show. Like this is full of insect cages, breeding uh, equipment. Maybe I'll open it in the future on another video, but I just wanted to show this off. Because this is, I'm taking this to Brazil and it's just full of enclosures for insects that I'm going to breed in the rainforest. It would be awesome to breed species of moths and butterflies there that no one else has raised before, you know, and be the first to discover their life cycles. That is my goal. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys super much for crowdfunding my channel. It means the world to me. Without my financial support, this channel would not be existing right now. And don't forget, if we make it to the next episode, number 10, I will do a live stream. A live stream of me eating extremely hot noodles, so you can see me suffer live. Thank you guys, see you in the next episode of Coffee with Bart.